Welcome to the last set of news to get top stories in crypto and bring out bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, it's all about where crypto is going as far as the future. So today we're going to talk about a couple of different variety as far as the news articles. So first up, the Ethereum upgrade that will destroy coins having a day. This is EIP-1559. Everybody's been talking about it, so I'm just going to briefly talk about what's going on and see where things are going. And really, in my opinion, things are going into what PayPal likes to call a super app. And I didn't really make... Uh, much sense of this, but when I take a look at the information that is out there, I can see that there's a lot of things going in the right direction as far as where payments are going. And really what it all comes down to is uh, stable coins. And it really makes sense when we take a look at this specific report. So we'll take a look at all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today, uh, first of all, I am in Puerto Rico. That's why I'm going back to the old fashioned uh, headphones. You might hear some uh, some roosters outside. Uh, but that is just uh, what's going on. We're here for business, going to take care of some things before we do the final move. But uh, today, uh, the market cap is a little bit of a slip. I mean, it says it's up plus 4%, but in all honesty, uh, we were at 1.7 trillion, now we're at 1.58. The Bitcoin price is 38.4, and uh, things have been looking pretty good. And uh, Ethereum's been doing great. I think we're up to around 25, 2600, somewhere around there. So, um, I think that these are, uh, we're going to see some some choppy water, but I think good times are, are yet to come. So really what I'm going to do is just jump into today's articles. And uh, the first thing uh, we're going to talk about is uh, two things, actually three things. First, I want to say thanks to uh, Unstoppable Domains for being the sponsor of this video. Uh, I personally have a bunch of them. What's great about that is that instead of me sending over uh, some long string for my Bitcoin address or my Ethereum address or whatever else of 0x5 blah, 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 I just send over danteacherscrypto.crypto or danteaches.crypto actually is my uh, uh, unstoppable domain and people can send payments to me all day long. So that's why I like them. So thanks again, Unstoppable Domains, for being a sponsor. So the PSA is two things. First of all, uh, if you're on Telegram, just so you know, look out for a digital asset news, Rob at Digital Asset News Trades, Newsflash, I do not trade. So uh, just stay away from that, that is a huge scam. I had some choice words for uh, this, this individual, which I will not share here, but uh, there's just something that I just cannot stand as far as scammers and I take no pity on them. I just don't care. Uh, it's because of uh, the past and things that have happened to me and some of my patients. And uh, I will never uh, give these scammers a pass. That's just ridiculous. So that's what's going on for the PSA. Just make sure you watch out for that. And then everybody's talking about this today. So I'm just going to briefly touch on it. Ethereum upgrade EIP 1559. There's two things. First of all, it's not going to lower the fees. What it's really going to do is just set a base fee for everybody. And uh, that base fee is going to get burned. So that it could be a, de a deflationary uh, part as far as Ethereum, which is which is really nice. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. And uh, there was supposed to be a, uh, a little bit of a hiccup, but it looks like they uh, are going through with it. And all the different exchanges right now, if you're trading on exchanges like Exchange or Voyager or, or any other place that has Ethereum, they're going to halt some trades for a little bit. You don't have to do anything. It's just uh, they're just doing that for to, to go over for this, uh, this upgrade. And um, that's really about what's going on. I think there was one piece here that I, I found interesting, and I'll just read this to you. EIP-1559 has become uh, popular because it will destroy or burn Ether, cryptocurrency network, which we just talked about. Miners don't receive the base fee. Uh, otherwise, they could artificially congest the network to keep the fees high, debatable. And then some investors believe that the fact that the supply of Ether will be limited by burning could cause explosive growth. Uh, it could, but uh, again, I think this is just one of those instances where you have to uh, buy the rumor and sell the news. So I don't know what's going to happen, but today is the day. So we'll see what the price does, but it's up tremendously. So if you've been holding on for Ethereum, congratulations. Uh, I hold a ton of Ethereum and uh, I think it's going to do well in the future, but I hold a lot of different smart contract uh, cryptos. So we'll see what happens. So that is it for uh, the PSA. And to me, this, the, these are the big stories. I mean, EIP 59 is going to go, go off without a hitch. I think it's going to do well, but here, is where I think things are going. I didn't understand this too well, but now I get it. It's all about payments. And this was, um, it was an article, I'm not gonna read uh, any of it, but really what it comes down to is PayPal wants to be a super app. And we covered this uh, in detail a couple of days ago. 
Uh, this is CEO Dan Schulman, and he says the exact same thing. He's like, I think we need to have a super app. First of all, in America, we don't have super apps. Uh, I guess Amazon would be like kind of that, but not really. Here is for WeChat Pay. And when you take a look at super apps, this is what they're talking about, an app that has many different faceted assets into one app. So look at this. You can uh, transfer, you can transfer funds. You can do, this is uh, WeChat's wealth management products. You can go for uh, utilities uh, as far as like different uh, digital, well, digital currencies. You can, what's called Go Dutch, where you can split things. Red Pack, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, you can order a taxi, rail and flights. You can get a, a hotel uh, style. You can do shopping, specials, movie tickets, group buy and Starbucks. So everything's just kind of here uh, for what you want to do. That is a super app because right now we have a bunch of different apps in America for different things. Like I have an app for one of my utilities. I have an app for if I want to get a hotel. I have an app called Uber if I want to get an actual rideshare program. And what super apps do is they bring those all together. In this article, uh, they say that we don't really need that. And uh, it's debatable. I think some people uh, could really work it out. But I think it all comes down to, to payments. And this was just put out. Now, we covered this like a week ago as well. And what it really comes down to is this. PayPal announcement that it would allow the transfer of crypto funds to third-party wallets. And Jose Fernandez says this, uh, said he saw payment platform as the natural way to distribute central bank digital currencies. And he believes that private payment platforms could help deliver government stimulus. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Governments can print the money. Well, they don't really print. It's just zeros and ones. And then they could take that those funds and then put it into the actual uh, wallets, which would be like a super app. And they could just distribute it uh, very quickly. And that could help the unbanked. So again, I think it comes down to a lot of things as far as like uh, the payments, which leads me to my next point. So if you're going to do payments and things like that, wouldn't it be great if you could get actual good yield on the payments that you're using? Because the banks aren't going to give you any kind of yield. It's going to be like 0.02%. Watch out. That sounds way too high. So if you have something like, like uh, a Voyager, a Kraken, a Coinbase, a uh, Binance, where you actually gain yield, a Celsius, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And then just we covered this as well before the loyalty program. So think of it this way. Uh, imagine buying tickets to attend a concert of your favorite artists, enjoying a dinner at your favorite restaurant, or shopping online to furnish your new home and in return receiving Voyager tokens as a reward sent straight to your Voyager account. That sounds pretty great. On top of the fact that if you're going to keep it into stable coins like USDC, uh, I, I'm not a big Tether fan, but USDC, then you could gain up to like on sales, I think it's like 8.8% and Voyager it's 9% and then crypto.com. I don't know what, how much it is over there or all the different places, but you can gain a ton of yield just for holding things in there. So again, why would you hold it anywhere else in your bank? So I think that a lot of things are going to happen and the crypto market is going to be revolved around payments, decentralized finance. And really, I think Alex Mashinsky had it right in World Mobile Token is bank the unbanked. So this comes out to my next point. And we're going to talk about uh, Unstoppable Domains and Circle. So again, uh, Unstoppable Domains reached out to me. They said, hey, can you, would you like to cover this? I'm like, I have a great story coming up as far as payments. This fits right in. Circle and Unstoppable Domains to introduce username-based USDC payments. What's happening here? Unstoppable Domains, blockchain provider, and USDC coin, stablecoin issuer Circle are collaborating to release readable dot coin usernames for USDC transfers. Newsflash, I've already bought mine. I got my full name, dot coin. Looks pretty good. Uh, both companies will collaborate to enable support for dot coin username extensions across wallets and the crypto exchanges. Uh, USDC transfers will become akin to sending an email. Makes it super easy, super fast, and super safe. Uh, simple usernames combined with dollar peg stable coins take the fear and risk out of spending crypto. So look, it comes down to this. I've always said this before, and I'll say it again. We're going to go through mass adoption when things become super cheap, super fast, and super easy. You didn't get mass adoption with the internet when people had to do any type of coding or any kind of things with the browser. It really took off when Netscape Navigator came along and said, we don't want you to look at what's going on under the hood. We're just going to make it super simple for you. And they did. And guess what? Things did really well. So then you had uh, Netscape Navigator, then you had uh, Mozilla Firefox, and you, of course you have Google Chrome, and now you have Brave Browser because there's this evolution of what's going on. So I think 
that if you can make things super easy for people, and they don't have to look under the hood, that's what people want. And that's what leads to mass adoption, in my personal opinion. So just so you know, it's and instead of using like, when you want to send payments, you can say, hey, send it to zero X, blah, 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 seven, five, three, five, seven, eight, nine, two. Or you're going to say, hey, send it to danteaches.crypto, or in this case, danteaches.coin. I think it's why I have it, something like that. And uh, that's what Unstoppable Domains allows you to do. Also, when you buy these uh, types of, which are uh, NFTs, uh, you are going to be able to hold them forever. It's not like you, when you buy a domain every year, like I have to do over at uh, uh, Dan teaches crypto.com. I think it uh, circles rub my head. I don't have to pay for that every year. It's just one time fee, uh, wham, bam, and that's it. So unstoppable domains, I mean, here's what I would do. Back in the early days, people would just buy dot coms and they would hold on to them for a long time and they would sell them for a mint. You can do something like that. But at the very minimum, uh, I would try to get my my name at dot crypto, which I've already done, or dot coin, or dot zill, or whatever else it is. So in the future, it's easy to make payments, or I guess you want to sell it. And of course, it's got integrations with all these different uh, apps and with all the different wallets. On top of the fact that uh, now you don't have to have an actual uh, uh, download. So your websites, like dot crypto, which I'm probably going to switch over Dan teaches to Dan teaches crypto.com, Dan teaches dot crypto. You have uh, natively uh, allowed in Brave and Opera. And when they get Chrome and Firefox, then it's all over. So uh, these days right now, Brave could go to danteaches.crypto and it would just go as far as the website. So check that out. There's a link in the description and that is what is going on. And the big thing here also to remember is that USDC, it's backed and supported by Visa. Visa is getting into that also because USDC is by Circle. And then Circle has also been audited uh, by actual big companies and said, yes, it is backed. So um, Tether is going through that struggle. I personally don't understand why people would, would hold Tether right now. I just don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. They're both backed by, by the same thing. So why don't you just use that? And uh, I think with Unstoppable Domains going with USDC was a smart move. If they would have said, we're going to partner with Tether, I probably wouldn't have covered it, just to be honest. Anyhow. Let me understand in the comment section and uh, let's go to our last piece. We're talking about crypto payments and 39%. So this is going to bring it all together. And I always said to myself, why would I want to spend my crypto as far as payments? This makes no sense. I'm not going to spend Bitcoin uh, or I'm not going to send Ethereum to like pay for whatever. I'm just not going to do it. But then I read this and I'm like, this makes sense. So crypto getting mainstream interest as payment option. A new report titled The Crypto Payments Playbook, uh, published by Payments and BitPay, shows that consumers are increasingly interested in using crypto for payments. The report analyzes a census balance survey of 8,000 consumers, U.S. consumers, who were current and former crypto owners and crypto non-owners between February 8th and February 23rd, 2021. And they said the study found that 93% of crypto users worldwide would consider making purchases with crypto in the future, while 59% of those who have never held crypto are interested in using it to make purchases. Why? Well, the reason for interest vary depending on the transactions. Its potential to eliminate middlemen can explain the interest in using crypto for real estate purchases, for example, while the possibility of a more secure and private transaction motivates purchases in the financial sectors, services, or e-commerce sectors. First of all, if we could eliminate the middlemen for uh, uh, for property or real estate purchases, like we're going to close on a condo down here uh, again in, in Puerto Rico. And the all the different fees that go along with that with for closing costs are astronomical. Once that gets eliminated, because everything can be uh, uh, automated and the middleman is gone, it would even drive up more of the, of the, of, uh, of the housing boom right now, I think, because it's just crazy. So if you get something like that, that's great. And then if you can make uh, purchases a lot easier, a lot faster. And then also, if you think about it, when you do any type of shopping, I'm sure some of you shop online. Uh, hopefully you're not using your debit cards. Hopefully you're using your credit cards. Because if your debit card gets hacked in certain banks, sometimes it takes a very long time to uh, uh, switch that over and actually get it reversed if it is hacked. Credit card's a little bit easier, but it's a real hassle. So why couldn't we just use 
cryptocurrency payments. Oh, and also, uh, when you use cryptocurrency payments, uh, guess what? Those middlemen, Stripe and PayPal. Yeah, PayPal. Uh, those interest fees or those fees uh, shrink to uh, very little because right now I pay 1.99% plus 30 cents per transaction on everything that people buy on my websites. Uh, not Vantage Crypto, it's 100% free, but other stuff that I do. So don't you think that bigger businesses would be really interested in making payments and just the little guy itself uh, to actually make payments just to make things a little bit more secure, more faster. And the fact that uh, you can actually keep it in like a Voyager in a Celsius, maybe make payments and Voyager can be able to do it and you can gain 10% yield. So to finish up, 59% of current or former crypto holders will be very or extremely interested in using crypto as a payment method. And that makes a lot of sense. And I will just say this. So for the loyalty program, which is uh, due out after the token swap is going on right now, imagine this, you get a free debit card and then you get cash back on your debit card between 0.1 and 0.3, depending on your loyalty uh, tier that you have. You have an interest booster for all the different uh, coins that you keep or tokens that you keep on uh, Voyager between 0.5 and 1.5. And here's the rates, just so you know. Uh, on Voyager. You have 3%, 5% for Cardano, 12% for Polkadot, 5.7% for Terra Luna, 9% for USDC, and Voyager is 7%. And not to be outdone, Celsius has also got fantastic rates. Uh, USDC is 8.88%. Uh, they got Bitcoin, 6.2 up to 1. After 1, it's 3.5. 5.5, 14% for synthetics. I mean, look, if you're looking for yield, why... First of all, if you're going to keep it in dollars, why keep it in your bank? Why don't you just keep it in stable coins? That's what I do over at Voyager. And then it uh, just makes sense to me that I think payments are going to be the future. And then also, if you're going to do things as far as like transfer money over, wouldn't you invest into cryptocurrency from these apps? So I think it's all, it's all coming together and it's all a big circle. And lastly, if you're looking for to sign up for Voyager or Celsius, there's a link in the description and all the different um, exchanges and wallets I've ever used are all right here. And you can sign up using the affiliate links. You don't have to use the affiliate links, but you can go straight to Voyager and sign up or Celsius or whatever else. But uh, these are the official ones. These are the ones that don't get you scammed. And they also give you between 10 and $40 of Bitcoin if you want to sign up. So look, that's it. That's it for today. Um, we got a lot of things to do. Hopefully I'm going to meet up with some friends over here in, in, uh, in Puerto Rico. And that's it for today. I think this, this month, I think it's going to be a little bit choppy, but I think there's good things on the horizon. I can only see big things happening. So look, if you like that video, thanks for sticking with me, first of all. Uh, give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the next one. Bye.